St. Joseph's tables are among the most vibrant expressions of Italian-American cultural identity. They are likened to a feast for the eyes, for the soul, and for the belly. But how did this tradition begin, and why has it endured for over 700 years? Who was St. Joseph? St. Joseph is one of the most revered saints in Christianity. He is the husband of the Virgin Mary and the earthly father of Jesus Christ. Despite his prominence, very little is known about St. Joseph's life. He is mentioned only 13 times in the Gospels, and because St. Joseph never speaks a single word, he is often referred to as the silent saint. Just before Jesus was born, Joseph and Mary traveled to Bethlehem to register for the census. They visited inn after inn in search of shelter, only to be turned away, and Jesus was famously born in a stable. This aspect of the nativity story figures prominently in the pageantry of St. Joseph's tables. We also recall that following Jesus' birth, King Herod, who had grown jealous after hearing a rumor of a newborn king, ordered all male children under the age of two living in the vicinity of Bethlehem to be murdered in what is known as the Massacre of the Innocents. According to the Bible, an angel appeared to Joseph in a dream, warning him of the imminent danger, and the family fled to Egypt. This is the reason why St. Joseph is a patron saint of immigrants, migrants, and refugees. St. Joseph was not widely worshipped until the late Middle Ages. Until then, it was the Madonna who received most of the focus. St. Joseph gradually changes this. He is presented as the ideal man, one who cares for his family. He is a tender, mothering father who helps promote respect for fatherhood and male authority. While St. Joseph is typically associated with Italy, the Spanish can be credited for widely promoting his veneration. St. Joseph's prominence grew as the power of the Spanish monarchy grew. Spain popularized St. Joseph in its colonies, from Honduras to the Philippines, and today there are more than 100 cities and towns named in honor of the saint in current and former Spanish territories. Devotion to St. Joseph continued to grow when Pope Gregory XV made St. Joseph's feast day a holy day of obligation in 1621. In 1870, Pope Pius IX declared St. Joseph the patron of the Catholic Church. St. Joseph is known as the catch-all saint. He is a patron of immigrants, workers, fathers, unborn children, families, travelers and migrants, expectant mothers, engineers, real estate agents, and craftspeople. St. Joseph was said to be a carpenter by trade, and the saint's iconography often depicts him in a carpenter's shop. His profession figures prominently in the items that are placed on St. Joseph's tables. According to popular belief, the tradition of constructing large altars of food in honor of St. Joseph dates to the Middle Ages, when there was a severe drought in Sicily and the population was on the verge of famine. The only crop that survived was the fava bean, which Sicilians had previously fed to their livestock. The desperate peasants prayed to St. Joseph, and when the rains arrived and they harvested the crops, the peasants made offerings of food to St. Joseph as a sign of gratitude. The food laid in altars became known as Tavole di San Giuseppe, or St. Joseph's Tables. While many embrace this founding story, the tradition of making springtime offerings of food can be traced back considerably further to pre-Christian times and pagan festivals held in honor of Ceres, the goddess of agriculture and prosperity. St. Joseph's Feast Day remains an important event in Sicily and elsewhere in southern Italy today where in addition to elaborate table altars, the feast is celebrated with processions, bonfires, and an event known as the Cavalcata di San Giuseppe, which reenacts the Holy Family's flight into Egypt. Some places also dramatize the Holy Family's search for shelter, a ritual known as the Tupa Tupa. 
Between 1870 and 1920, some 14 million Italians left their homeland, fleeing poverty, natural disasters, disease, oppression, and social inequality. This was one of the largest human migrations in history. Approximately 75% of those who immigrated hailed from southern Italy, especially the region of Sicily. Italian immigrants brought the tradition of St. Joseph's Tables to the United States, and today the altars can be found in all 50 states. St. Joseph's Tables assumed a new significance following the immigrants' arrival. They represented the Italians' migration journey and their triumph over poverty, in addition to their spiritual beliefs. St. Joseph's Tables have also come to symbolize the preservation of cultural religious traditions, and they remind Italian Americans of the era in which they were the scorned immigrants. St. Joseph's Tables are more than simply altars of food. This ancient living tradition is an expression of charity, community, gratitude, and devotion. St. Joseph's Tables take a number of forms, and while they share certain elements, they prove as diverse as their creators. Preparation for a St. Joseph's Table begins months in advance, and each table is set into motion by a vow or a promise that the petitioner makes to St. Joseph. They can also embody an expression of gratitude for a prayer that has been answered, such as a loved one being healed from an illness or returning home safely. Although both men and women can petition St. Joseph, women traditionally direct the construction of the altar and all that is placed upon it. Each item placed on the table carries tremendous significance. A statue or image of St. Joseph is displayed at the very top, as the saint is the altar's focal point, and its position signifies St. Joseph's ascendancy. Many St. Joseph's tables are constructed with three tiers as a reference to the Holy Trinity or the Holy Family. Closest to the image of the saint, one finds traditional St. Joseph's breads, which are highly decorative and take a number of symbolic shapes. The bread's location in proximity to the image of St. Joseph reflects a belief that bread is a divine gift. It is one of the most powerful symbols in Christianity, an important part of Italian culture and diet, and evidence that hunger has been defeated. The foods considered most sacred in Italian culture, including wine, wheat, and oranges, are positioned closest to the holy image, whereas more secular foods, such as cookies, are placed further away. Wheat, another important Sicilian crop and a divine provision, can be found in various forms on the table, as sheaves, transformed into pasta, and as breadcrumbs, or mudriga, which symbolize the wood shavings found in St. Joseph's carpentry shop. Breadcrumbs are also incorporated into many of the traditional dishes placed on the altars. Because St. Joseph's feast day occurs during Lent, a time during which Catholics typically abstain from eating meat, the foods on the altars are meatless. They include pasta con le sarde, or pasta with sardines, frittate, a type of savory omelet, and vegetables prepared in an endless number of delicious ways. Many altars contain 12 whole fish to symbolize the 12 apostles. Fava beans are also displayed as a reminder of the Sicilian famine, and they are frequently distributed at St. Joseph's tables as good luck charms. You will notice the colors of red, white, gold, and green, colors associated with St. Joseph, are used abundantly. An assortment of irresistible sweets, such as zeppole di San Giuseppe, a type of custard-filled cream puffs, fig cookies known as cucirate, and struffoli, honey-covered fritters, are among the traditional desserts found on the altars. The foods showcased will feed those who attend the event, while others will be sold and the funds donated to charity. Extending relief to the less fortunate is a key aspect of St. Joseph's Tables. According to tradition, all who attend a St. Joseph's Table are fed, and no one is turned away.
In preparation for the exhibition, St. Joseph's Tables, Expressions of Devotion, Charity, and Abundance, which opened at the Italian American Museum of Los Angeles in March of 2020, the museum issued a call for objects, images, and other items related to the tradition. Communities across the country responded. The IMLA received contributions from Iowa, New York, Texas, Colorado, Missouri, Louisiana, New Jersey, and California, among other states. The exhibition at the IMLA also features items that reflect St. Joseph's prominence in the devotional lives of Italians and Italian Americans. From prayer books and statues passed down generations to a century old banner from the St. Joseph's Congregation headquartered at Our Lady of Mount Carmel Church in Pueblo, Colorado. The St. Joseph's breads are the most exquisite features of the altars. The large yisto breads, known as Pane de San Giuseppe, can weigh upwards of 10 pounds and are formed into many symbolic shapes, such as hearts, crosses, and tools a reference to St. Joseph the Carpenter. The highly decorative but inedible pastry-like breads, known as squartucciati, cucirati, and vastede, similarly take many symbolic shapes, including chalices, St. Joseph's sandals, fish, a reference to Jesus, the fisher of men, and dozens of other shapes. To create these breads, a fig mixture is spread on top of a thin sheet of dough. Another layer of dough is placed on top and portions are carved away to create intricate designs. This tradition dates to the Baroque period in Sicily. The century-old family-owned De Camillo Bakery in upstate New York was among those who contributed breads to the exhibition. The IMLA also received contributions from bakers across the country.